Hello everyone, welcome back to 45 Drives for another tech tip video and uh, today we are talking about the Proxmox Data Center Manager. And now if you're looking at me with your head sideways kind of like dogs do when they're confused like what the hell is that? It's a really, really cool new feature out of Proxmox released about a month ago. When I say released, it was just the alpha release about um, a kind of single pane of glass to manage all your many Proxmox instances. Anyway, it's a really cool feature. That's what we do in these videos. We show new things, we show things that we've built, are gonna be building, halfway through be building, or our partners or anything like that. Just anything exciting in this world. So um, why don't we dive into it right after the intro. I'm gonna tell you what the Proxmox Data Center Manager is. And we're gonna take a little um, uh, screen cap journey through the alpha and uh, talk about how this is gonna benefit not only 45 Drives customers, but just general Proxmox users overall. Okay, so before we dive to the tour on the screen here, what is it? What is the Proxmox Data Center Manager? It is a centralized view of all your nodes and clusters. So if, again, if you've used Proxmox, you might go, well, I already have that for my cluster. No, 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 it's a layer up. It can take all your clusters, all your individual nodes, whatever. Maybe you have them spread across a continent. Maybe you just have a bunch of them in your home app. I don't know, but it's a one single pane of glass that gives you uh, visibility and some basic management features without having to dive into each individual instance of your Proxmox. Really cool. It's got some key features like uh, shows you basic resource management of everything. You can start and stop VMs across all your Proxmox instances. Um, you can migrate VMs between your Proxmox, not just nodes in a Proxmox cluster, but I could have a single Proxmox instance, maybe in one building and another one over somewhere else. And without any crazy networking um, compatibility, I can send one over to the other one. Really, really cool. Um, and you know what, I can go on and on, but it'll look a lot cooler if we show you the, uh, show you on the screen as I take you through a couple of these features. Keep in mind, this is still the alpha release. Not everything is working. It is not fully featured yet. So uh, one thing in particular I'll show you, it's not functioning on my machines right now. Maybe it's a bug, maybe it's something I did wrong. I don't know, but that's the fun part of alphas. We play with them, we break them, we give feedback back. Anyway, this will be a great use case for anyone who's got a bunch of Proxmox things to manage. In particular, MSPs. Uh, people who help run other people's systems and want to have a quick glance to see if there's anything wrong. Maybe you've got three or four offices you manage and they all have a Proxmox instance. You can have one view of that and just see the state of things and help out from your home or office or wherever you work. Anyway, I've rambled long enough. Let's jump to the screen and I'll show you some of how those features work. Okay, so let's go through the uh, features that are available in the alpha right now. Um, so here we are looking at the overview of the Proxmox Data Center Manager. Um, so uh, a couple quick things to look at the overview, right? You can see all your, uh, all your remotes. It, your remotes in this case are the individual clusters or individual servers. Bad choice of words, but you see what I was saying there. Um, and it just tells you quickly, I can reach everyone. I can monitor everyone. You get a good green check mark. Uh, next, it shows you the actual number of nodes, regardless if it's a single server or a cluster of them, it shows the sum of all of them so you can see. In my case, I have a two node cluster involved right now. Um, sorry, connected right now. Uh, it also gives you a look at your uh, virtual machines, how many are running, how many are stopped, and your running and stopped Linux containers. It gives you a look at your subscription status, and as well as it gives you um, some resources, uh, a view into the resources, memory, CPU, and which VMs have the highest CPU usage. In my environment right now, this does not seem to be working. Um, no big deal. Uh, maybe there's something bugged in there, maybe it's something wrong I did set up. But this is exactly what we all need to remember to do as members of the open source community, report these bugs. So I'm looking at the screen telling everyone to report these bugs, but what I'm actually doing is looking at the reflection in the camera right now and telling myself, remember, go report this bug. That's how things get fixed, remember that. Um, anyway, that's the overview of the overview screen. <laughs> anyway, let's add a remote. Let's do the first thing that we would do. I already have one added, but now you've got another cluster that you wanna to add to your uh, data center manager. So I'm gonna add one of our NVMe clusters we have built on our F2 Stornados, running highly, highly converged, hyper converged Ceph. Um, this is kind of the first thing you would do when you get to here. 
keep in mind, your Proxmox needs to be running at least version 8.3. Don't do what I did and beat your head against the wall trying to add in a version 7 one before reading the documentation. Again, another tip, not for everyone, me looking in the reflection of the camera, read the documentation. Anyway, I digress. Let's add a remote. So the first remote to add in is our three node NVMe cluster, like I said. So I wanna add in the IP to that server. Um, it's best to set up DNS on that. I think you'll probably run into some bugs this way. I don't have that set up. I'm just gonna use the IP because um, I want to. And I'm gonna paste in my fingerprint. Where do you get the fingerprint? Go check out the documentation. It tells you where everything is. Um, then we're gonna hit connect here. Connection is okay, perfect, let's move on. Next, we're gonna give it a name. I'm gonna say R&D Rack uh, Prox NVMe Cluster. Why not? That rolls off the tongue, right? And then you're gonna give login credentials. Um, these are the login credentials that you would use to log into the UI of that individual node. Um, and you're gonna choose PAM, and we're gonna hit scan, and it's gonna go, okay, everything's good there. I'm gonna go next. This is what I was talking about with the DNS. It wants to use the host names. I don't have the DNS set up, so I have to use IPs. See that first one got duplicated. I'm deleting it because that NVMe Prox one is the 5.200. So I'm going to change this to 201. I'm gonna change this to 202. And we're gonna hit next here. I'm gonna give us a summary and I'm gonna to try to connect here. Boom, fast, easy, everyone's in. Let me give this page a refresh. And now we can see on the left-hand side, our new cluster has been added to our remote list. We can still reach all the remotes, but now I have five nodes online because those three I just added and my number of VMs just shot up too, so awesome. That's the first kind of overview. That's how you add a remote in with the Proxmox Data Center Manager. Okay, remote's been added. We've looked at the overview screen. Let's take a look at what we can do with these remotes now. Like, so now I have a bunch of these Proxmox remotes as the words I'll keep, I'll use their language. That makes this the least confusing. Um, so if I jump here, it shows me uh, the ones I have added. I can remove them, edit them if I need to, or I can add a new one from the screen too or I can dive into one of my remotes. And now I get a good single pane glass look at um, uh, my, my cluster here. So if I've got the first one connected, this is the first node in this uh, Proxmox remote, NVMe Prox one, I can minimize all these. And you notice when I click each one on the side of the screen here, it's individual stats pop up. That's freaking awesome. Also, if we look at the nested list under each of them, it shows all the VMs running on it right now, which is also awesome. Here, um, see, I can go to a, I can click on an individual virtual machine and see its resources. So a very convenient way, so I don't have to jump between screens like this and search for VMs that way. It's awesome. Um, I can filter. Um, if I spelled it right, I can filter. And so you can search right in here. It's really, really um, efficient and easy. Uh, you would see resource, um, uh, reports here and everything. But like I mentioned earlier, there's something wrong either with the build here or with my setup. Um, but again, bug, report, we'll move on and fix it from there. That's a feature that's going to be functioning perfectly. We can see ah, just all kinds of information without having to jump around. It's awesome. Moving on to the next feature that you can do here is you can do, do uh, general administration of your um, resources, your virtual guests. Uh, I can start and stop a VM right in the, uh, right in the um, UI here. So that's beginning, task okay, that'll switch over. Perfect, started, wonderful. I could stop them, uh, convenient. Um, all that nice things, you don't have to jump in. The next really, really cool feature of this, actually, you know what, I'll save the really cool feature for the end, I'll end on that. Um, if I wanna jump right to this UI, I can click this, it'll bring me to the login screen. And boom, I'm on that VM. So again, if you wanna do some more detailed stuff and dive back into the classic UI, it's a quick way to go. I really do seeing this as this data center manager as the kind of, especially if you have more than one remote, as the de facto way to jump in and out so you don't have to remember IPs or anything like that. Love it. Um, if I scroll down, any of the tags that you give VMs and stuff, they show up here. Actually, you know what, I wonder if I can, yes, you can. And you can filter on tags too, that's awesome. Um, anyway, the really cool feature I wanted to show too, and um, what you can do is you can migrate your virtual machines. 
And again, you might be saying to me, yes, we always could do that. No, no, no. With Data Center Manager, you can migrate your machines from one remote to another remote. That's, that's a really, really useful thing because it's a bit of a pain to do right now. You got to kind of hack a different kind of solution. So um, what you would do there is pick a VM. Um, you would want to choose the target remote or where you want to go. There you go. Uh, if you want to delete the source or not delete the source, the target storage or where you want it to go. I want it to go to maybe the RBDHDD, which network to use, and then you just migrate. And of course it failed on me right away, but it failed on me because, uh, ah, I tried to send a VM that's got a number already present. So I tried to send VM 104 to another remote and VM 104 already exists. So that's going to be a bit of a pain to navigate which, which allowed VM names are, are available, but that's something we'll feed back to the developers too. Maybe they can figure out something on. nice. But the main thing to take away from this here is if you've got multiple Proxmox things around the world, around the country, around the whatever, not within the same cluster, you can now migrate VMs between them or are going to be migrating VMs between them. That opens up a lot of possibilities for using Proxmox to do a lot of backup utilities or just moving things around. Really, really big feature coming. And um, anyway, I think there, we'll stop there for now because that's all we're seeing in the alpha. But we'll keep you updated as we're going. We're really excited to use this with our customers as, as it becomes more fully featured and everything. And oh, let's end with the other fun part. When will it be available? Proxmox is expecting this to be stable version 1.0 um, by the late uh, 2025, so the end of this year that we've just started. So can't wait to see where this goes. It's gonna be a big one for the open source community. Proxmox, the energy and velocity they have in their development is just whew, flying. So keep it up, guys. We love it, community loves it. And that's a peek at the Proxmox Data Center Manager.